Docker is an amazing piece of technology. With a Docker container, you can run almost anything on almost any computer without needing any dependencies at all, because anything needed to run a program is isolated and included in the Docker image itself. And in this video, I wanna build a very interesting and abnormal image to show off the power of Docker containers. So grab your shotguns and let's get into it. Wait, what? If you're a software developer, then you've probably at least heard of Docker. Docker is an amazing container technology that allows you to easily package up your application, library, program, or whatever else, and all of its dependencies into something called an image. This image can then be run on pretty much any computer because the image will get run in a container that's walled off from the rest of your system. But packaging up an application into a Docker file is kind of bland. I mean, everyone's done it. You've probably seen a video on it. There's been a million introductions to Docker out there. I think in order to properly show off Docker, we should do something a little out of the box. So in this episode, I'm going to take you step by step on how to package up one of my favorite programs recently, Terminal Doom. And to test the portability of this image, we're going to play it on my wife's computer. Now, my wife is a nurse and she doesn't know anything about computers, so this should be a good test on how well Docker containers and images work across machines. Now, Terminal Doom is an awesome program that enables you to play Doom in the terminal, as you might have guessed from the title. <laughs> You're so smart, aren't you? Look at you. <laughs> but in order to run this program, you have to do a lot of stuff. Here, check this out. Now it's a really great program and it runs in Zig, so it's blazingly fast. It's really cool, but there's a lot of steps to get it to work. Let's just do them really, really quickly. First of all, you're gonna have to clone a repository to your system by git cloning it. Then you're gonna have to make sure you have Zig installed on your system. So for me, I can install Zig using Pac-Man because I use Arch, by the way. So I can type yay s Zig, and this will install Zig for me on my system. Then we want to CD into the directory that we just cloned and actually build this program using Zig. They give you a command right here in the repository to make things easier for you. There it is. So we run zig build with an optional flag and this will build our program so that we can then run it in our terminal. And now we wait, we play the waiting game. <laughs> then once the program is done being built, we can just run a simple command to run this program in our terminal using zig. And then here we go. And there it is, this is Doom and I can play Doom on my computer. It's actually kind of amazing. Let's do a new game here. And then we can just like go around and play Doom. And this is really cool. Now, in order to run this thing on my wife's computer, we're gonna wanna manage all the dependencies ourselves. She isn't gonna have these dependencies on her computer. She's not gonna have Zig. She's not gonna have Git. She's not gonna have a lot of this stuff. Her computer is mostly nursing PDFs and old episodes of Real Housewives of New Jersey. And this is where Docker comes into play. So let's build an image in Docker that can run Doom in the terminal and then let's install it on my wife's computer to show off the portability of docker images now it's really easy to actually create a docker image all you have to do is create a docker file that you can then use to build an image from and that docker file is really just a list of steps so let's get into that right now in a new project we want to just create a docker file and let's open it with neovim because we use neovim by the way now the thing we want to start with in a docker file is a base image and for me i find ubuntu to be the most familiar and easy to use so we can use the base image of Ubuntu with the tag of latest. This will install the latest version of Ubuntu in this environment right here for us. Next thing you want to do is actually install some dependencies by running the run command. We can install dependencies into our Ubuntu image using the run command. So we call run. We want to type apt get update. This will update all of our systems repositories. And then what we want to do is type apt get install just a few programs. First of all, we're going to want curl because we're going to curl something from a repository. That's how we're going to install Zig. So let's install curl curl and we can install what's called build essential this is an essential package for building things in ubuntu think like c libraries stuff like that next we're going to install something that's very important here which is git now git is something that we need because if you remember we cloned a repository earlier in this video so we're going to need git in our image in order to clone a repository then we're going to want to clean up after ourselves by using apt get clean and the very last thing we want to do is remove some of the stuff that gets left over. Looks like Copilot correctly guessed this. Some of the stuff that gets left over when you install things in Ubuntu. We want to make this as clean as possible to keep the actual size of the image as small as possible. And we just reorder some things and we're looking pretty good. Now, the next thing we're going to want to do is actually install Zig into this image. And we can see here at this website for Zig, the easiest way to do that is by downloading a tar file and untarring it in the image itself. Now we can see if we just hover over 
over this link here for Linux x86 64 architecture that there is a little URL that we can use. Let's show off what that looks like. So we can just paste some code in here and I can explain how this works. What we're going to do is we're actually going to use the curl package that we installed in Ubuntu to download this file. This file is a tar file. Then we're going to decompress that tar file into a directory user local bin. And this directory is going to be in our run path in our environment, which is going to allow Zig to be run by just typing Zig. Okay, great. So now we have Zig installed theoretically in this Docker file. The next thing we're gonna wanna do is set our working directory to slash app. Now this is a made up thing. It could be any directory you want, but just to keep our work neat in this image, we wanna set the directory that we want to work within to slash app. Now this makes every command after this command run in the slash app directory in the image. The next thing we're gonna wanna do is actually clone the repository that we're using before. This repository right here. We basically wanna run the same command on our local machine as we do in this image. So we wanna run git clone and the repository that we cloned before. Now this repository is cloned in the slash app slash terminal doom directory. So let's make our new working directory slash app slash terminal doom. Now, just like before how we ran it on our local machine, there's a command to actually build the program for the terminal, which is zig build. So let's copy this from the repository just like before. And we want a new run command that will run that in our current directory, which is app terminal doom. And then once this is built, that means the program is ready to be run. So the very last thing we need is our default command that we want to run in this Docker image. And so our command is going to be the command that we copied before in our local machine, the zig out bin terminal doom command. So let's copy that one more time and just paste it as our default command that gets run when we run this image. Awesome. That's basically the whole entire app that we need that can be created, uploaded to Docker hub and ported over to whatever computer we want. So let's Let's write and quit that. So now let's see if this Docker image actually builds. So we can just run Docker build and we can tag this image with, um, I don't know, for now let's just write something terminal, just as, just as an example here. And we want this current directory because it's gonna find the Docker file in our current directory. So let's run this command and see what happens. Okay, well now we see that we have downloaded Ubuntu latest. We are now curling our repository. Now we have a little bit of an error here, but that's pretty easy to fix. I can just open up my Docker file and change that there was an empty continuation on line 11. Docker gives you some pretty good error messages. So we can just change this, right and quit the file, and then let's just run Docker build again. Now what's gonna happen here is really interesting. Docker builds things in layers. And so the previous layers that were already built are gonna be cached so that the next time you build it, it's gonna run super fast. Now Ubuntu doesn't need to be installed again and the packages don't need to be installed because we already built that layer of this Docker file. So that's really fast now. And now we're right on to building this program in Zig, which is great. Okay, great, now our image has been built. And look at this in this line right here. This is really interesting. You see, because I have Docker desktop installed, I have a couple of extra tools installed with my Docker installation on Linux. And it tells me that I can check my image vulnerabilities and recommendations with Docker Scout Quick View. Docker Scout's an amazing program that comes with Docker. It allows you to check all the vulnerabilities of your images. It gives you a really great breakdown. So let's check this out. We can type Docker Scout Quick View, just as the prompt told us to do. And let's see what happens. Okay, this is amazing. Docker Scout gave us some interesting vulnerabilities that even in this very simple image that we wrote still exists. So let's look at some of these vulnerabilities. We can see that we can view our vulnerabilities using this command, Docker Scout CVEs, and let's check that out. Okay, long story short, Docker Scout found a ton of possible vulnerabilities that are not super critical, but actually probably should be fixed anyways. We can see that we have 36 low vulnerabilities and 432 medium ones. So let's view our base image update recommendations by copying this command right here. And it's actually really cool how easy it is to do these things with Docker Scout. It's kind of amazing. Okay, now let's just make my window a little bit bigger here so that we can see everything that Docker Scout is giving us. Let's just go full screen real quick and we're full screen. Let's go, baby. And it looks like what it wants us to do is actually update our base image from 2404 of Ubuntu to 2410. So if we update our base images tag to 2410, we actually get rid of all the vulnerabilities that it found in our package. Okay, so that sounds really good. So now let's update our Docker file to use instead of Ubuntu latest, let's use Ubuntu 24.10. 
So let's see what that does. Now we can just build a new version of this image by running the same thing before, but let's tag it with a new one, a new tag, like, I don't know, update or something. Now let's see what this does. And now of course, because we are now installing a new version of Ubuntu and rebuilding our whole entire image, Docker doesn't have these layers already saved. It's all new stuff. So Docker is now rebuilding everything for us. Okay, great. So now Docker has rebuilt our image with this new version of Ubuntu. Let's see what our Docker Scout quick view gives us this time. I'm gonna guess that it's not so bad. Oh my God, this is amazing. Look at this. Just by updating our Ubuntu version, we now have zero vulnerabilities. This is amazing. Docker Scout is really unbelievable. It gives you a great granular breakdown of all the vulnerabilities in your system, and it gives you recommendations on how to fix them. And so just by following the prompts that Docker Scout gave us, we went from, what was it? 432 vulnerabilities now to zero, baby. That's awesome. Docker Scout is amazing. So now the last thing we can do to test this locally is actually run this to make sure that Doom will run with this Docker image in a container. So what we can do is we can run Docker run. And what do I call this again? Something terminal update is the tag. And I want to run this in interactive mode because this is an interactive program. It's not just a one-off program. So we do Docker run dash IT something terminal tag update. Okay. So now let's run this and see how it works. And oh my goodness, look at this, it's Doom. It's running just like it was locally, except now this is in a Docker container that's isolated from the rest of our system. So it should be able to be easily ported from one system to another because all of the dependencies are built within this image. This is so cool. All right, now let's get out of Doom. I don't wanna play this right now. I have some more work to do to actually get this on my wife's computer. Okay, so now how do we get this on my wife's computer? You see, I built this image, I can run it locally, but this isn't my wife's computer, this is my work computer. How do I get it on my wife's computer? Well. What we can do is push this image to Docker Hub. So let's do that right now. Now what we're gonna need is an actual Docker Hub account. I've already created one through my GitHub account, so those two things are linked, but just create a Docker Hub account if you wanna follow along with this part of the tutorial. After creating a Docker Hub account, what you're gonna wanna do is from your CLI, log in and authenticate with Docker using Docker space login as a CLI command. Now it's gonna log in with your existing credentials, and for me, this has already been logged into, so I'm already logged in and it says login succeeded. Otherwise, it will open a browser window and have you log Log into Docker Hub and then it will authenticate you through the CLI just like this. The next thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is actually tag this image by prepending it with the account name for Docker Hub so that I can, I can then push it up to Docker Hub. So let's do that now. I can run Docker tag something terminal update, I believe it was. And I can now tag that with my username on Docker Hub, which is Typecraft. And I wanna name this something a little bit better, maybe like Terminal Doom, right? And I wanna tag this with a version, let's call this version, I don't know, 1.0. That sounds good. And now that this is tagged, we can now push this to Docker Hub. So we can run Docker push Typecraft Terminal Doom 1.0 and this will actually push our image to Docker Hub. Docker Hub is kind of like GitHub, but for Docker images instead of GitHub repositories, if that makes sense. Okay, great, this is amazing. So now our image should exist on Docker Hub. So let's check that out now. Now you just sign into Docker Hub. I'm already logged in through GitHub, so this should just push me right to my default dashboard. And here we go, here's Typecraft Terminal Doom. And now when you're in Docker Hub, you can actually see that our latest version, which is our 1.0 tag, was pushed to Docker Hub. That's awesome. And we can also see that under vulnerabilities, there are none that were found. As you can see in the top right here, it is being analyzed by Docker Scout. And just to check things out, some previous versions that I pushed up just for testing have a lot of those vulnerabilities that we fixed from the CLI. So if you click on these inside of Docker Hub, you get an amazing breakdown of all the vulnerabilities, where they come from, all the information for these vulnerabilities, and you have your recommendations on how to fix those in your image. Now we can click on view recommended base image fixes. And we can see now in this pop-up, if we up update Ubuntu from 2404 to 2410, we go from a bunch of vulnerabilities to zero. This is fantastic. And this is what we did on the CLI, but it's really great to see this on the web as well on the Docker Hub platform. Docker Scout is unbelievable. If you're pushing things to Docker Hub and they're gonna be used by a lot of people, I highly suggest Docker Scout because I don't wanna install any bugs on my wife's computer. I'll never hear the end of it. Right, fellas? <laughs>
So be sure to use Docker Scout. It's an amazing tool. So I just interrupted my wife watching Real Housewives of New Jersey to take her computer. She's really mad. So let's start playing Terminal Doom really quick. Let's get into it. Now I only did two things with this computer so far. I installed Docker Desktop and I installed Kitty, which is a terminal program that allows us to view images in the terminal. This is something that we need in order to play Doom in the terminal because Doom just draws a bunch of images on the screen. You just need a terminal that supports images. That's all. So now that we're in Docker Desktop, we can really just search for type craft slash terminal doom click on images and there we go we have typecraft's terminal doom and we can see even on docker desktop we actually inspect this thing for vulnerabilities using docker scout so docker scout's already everywhere and it is amazing so all we have to do now is install this image and then run it on this computer and it should work now there's just one thing i want to talk about i actually had to build this image for the arm architecture because apple silicon computers run on the arm architecture whereas initially i built this image using the the Linux x86-64 architecture. So read up on the documentation with Docker. It's not that complex, but you're just gonna wanna build another image that you tag with Arch64 to make sure that we can differentiate between the two. So now all we have to do is call Docker space run, and we wanna run the Typecraft, if I could type correctly, wanna run the Typecraft slash terminal doom image with the tag of arch 64 again this is just the tag that i gave to the image that i built for the arm architectures that can run on this computer and once again this is an interactive program so we want to have the it flag for interactive so let's run it and there we go now we're playing doom on my wife's computer on the terminal this is unbelievable okay well i'm gonna go give this back to my wife so she can finish watching her stories but docker is amazing docker hub docker scout the cli all this stuff is unbelievable and extremely powerful so remember to subscribe and hey thanks nerds